Hi there, this is Mr Evans. Uh, this paper is going to look at the structure for answering a nine mark question, uh, particularly in paper one. So um, the nine mark questions crop up in section C. Um, and so what's the structure for answering a nine mark question? Well, these questions lend themselves to um, a definition to start off with, defining the key term in the question, or at least one key term in the question, and two paragraphs of analytical writing focused on answering the question. So the question then becomes, if I've got to write analytically, what, what is actually analysis? So analysis um, can be explained in any number of ways. It's an explanation of cause and effect. Something happens, something changes, and the impact is X, Y, or Z. Um, you know, we use analysis all the time. You probably call it different things in your different subjects, or you might just call it analysis in your different subjects. But essentially, it's about identifying relationships um, between two different variables or more. Um, you know, and you, you talk about it all the time with your friends. Why, you know, why is uh, this Brad Pitt film you know, going to be such a box office success, or uh, why um, are Chelsea going to win the uh, Premier League this season? Um, and uh, you can analyse that using cause and effect, um, and you would build a chain of argument. So that's uh, what we're trying to do. We're trying to use the case study, the evidence we've got, to build a coherent and logical chain of argument. We're going to want to use connectives. Now that might be a system like BLTU, because leading to, therefore ultimately, uh, peel, where you point evidence, explain, link back to question. You know, there's all sorts of little anacronyms uh, that you can use. No examiner is going to mark you down because you haven't used a particular system. The whole point of all of these kind of little things, and you see them all differently in different schools, is to get you to think about using connectives to, to build this uh, uh, chain of argument that we're talking about. So... Um, in the previous video, I uh, showed you how I would highlight a case study, um, and the yellow information provides information that I'm going to use in answering the nine mark question. So the nine mark question is, analyse how marketing decisions may have helped Halford to achieve its high market share in the bicycle and bicycle accessories market. This was a question from last year. So the question is about marketing decisions, and I identified that they've got quite a lot of information in here about product and decisions that Halford have made about their product range. Um, and there's also quite a lot of information there on place. Now, I could talk about all f seven uh, parts of the marketing mix, but I'm not going to, right? That's going to be trying to do too much in an essay. I'm just going to talk about two things. I've got loads of information on product and loads of information on place. So this is a paragraph that I've written. Um, and I'm going to point out a couple of things to you as we're going through. Um, every time I've underlined in bold uh, and highlighted, sorry, every bit of bold text that's underlined is about um, the question, which is the high market share. So every time I've put in bold and underlined, it's about having a high market share. Um, I've highlighted the connectives that I've used in italics um, and uh, any application to the case study uh, is kind of this purpley or pink colour. So let's just read my answer. So one way in which marketing decisions have helped Alpha to gain its high market share is through their extensive product range. Now what I've done in the first sentence here is I have paraphrased the question. The question is, how are its marketing decisions helping Halfords achieve its high market share? One way that marketing decisions have helped it achieve its high market share is through the product range. Okay, so first of all, I'm paraphrasing the question, which is two things. Number one, it helps me get on track. And number two, it helps the examiner know that I've understood the question and I'm answering it. Okay, so I've uh, highlighted the, the connectives that I've used. Okay, so why? their extensive product range, is that going to 
help improve their market share. So because they have increased the range of bikes that they sell from 200 to, uh, because they've increased the range of bikes they sell from 200 to 283, uh, that shouldn't be a full stop there, this may mean that they're able to attract a wider range of consumers, uh, such as people into road, racing and commuters who require folding bikes. So where do they get the 200 to 283? Uh, it's right there. Um, and uh, so that's using the case study, that's application, such as people who are into road racing commuter and commuters who require folding bikes. So this is an application as well, it's about the cycle market. And the point is that they've increased the range of bikes that they sell and therefore they're able to attract a wider range of consumers, in other words, gain market share. As a result of appealing to different niches in the mass market, okay, so using business terminology, I sound like a business student, they've been able to achieve nearly 25% of the sales of bicycles in the UK. All right, so I'm using the information in the case study up here. In addition to this, so this is a new point now, they sell bicycling accessories and a fitting service. Okay, introducing a fitting service, talks about bicycling and accessories as well. This means, so there's the connective, increased convenience for customers who may lack the expertise and skills to fit parts themselves. Uh, okay, so that would very much be me, I'm not terribly practical, but it's about uh, the context which is biking and attracts customers from rival businesses who do not offer the same services, ultimately increasing Halford's market share. So, um, I've, at the end of the paragraph, I've also uh, linked back to the question, and I've, I've pulled it back to this. All of this, all of these decisions on products are going to help Halford increase their market share, i.e., gain a high market share. So, um, here are a couple of real life examples uh, of student answers from last year's exams. That been marked. This one got three marks. I mean, you're more than welcome to pause it, but I'll just uh, pick up a couple of things for you. This student has discussed place, um, place, physical environment, price, process, product. They've tried to do far too much and they've got three marks as a result. They haven't focused their answer. Um, this question isn't too bad actually, have a read of it, it's not actually awful, they've used 25% of bicycle sales, 200 to 283, lots of the things that I've used. Um, however, have a look at this, this could further result in high profit and sales for the business as more people have a choice. Okay, uh, they've also chosen to do places, their second paragraph, which I would have done, 90% of orders delivered to stores, more satisfied customers, cause a knock-on effect, Increased market shares because of good reviews and efficiency. Okay, it, it's far more, the, the paragraphs aren't as long as my ones, um, uh, but it lacks a real focus on the context of the question as it doesn't clearly demonstrate how these marketing decisions might contribute to achieving a high customer uh, share, high market share, focusing on uh, outcomes such as sales and customer loyalty. Look, they've linked to customer loyalty at the end of their paragraph. All right, so it's not clearly in the context of the question, which is market share. Now, here's an example of a uh, uh, response C, which AQA gave nine marks to. They've started off with a definition of market share and even a little bit of application with their definition. Um, they've used uh, advantage against other stores such as Sports Direct, added an extra 83 types of bikes. So we know this is in context. Um, wider range of accessories means people who are going to buy bicycles more likely to go to Halfords. Therefore means market share will increase as more people shopping at Halfords instead of their competitors. Clearly linked back to the question in the final sentence. Uh, fitting service, USP to stand out against competitors. Uh, meaning their market share will be higher as people are going to them might not even think about going out because they see Halfords as a one-stop shop for everything to do with bicycles. So you can see each paragraph is clearly explained in context and linked uh, back to the question, which is market share. 
So, quick uh, checklist for answering a nine mark question. Number one, start off with a clear definition of one term. If there's more than one term, I would just focus on one definition. Uh, just get yourself off the mark. Certainly don't start with there are many advantages and disadvantages. Of, that's a rubbish statement. It's not going to pick you up in marks. Um, in terms of each paragraph, start by paraphrasing the question. Use data from the case study to back up what you're saying. Uh, build a chain of argument using connectives, whatever system it is that you want to use, or just, you know, don't even need a system, but you just need to know that you're trying to build a logical chain of argument. Therefore, this leads to uh, because of, etc. Um, and finally, really important, make sure your answer is focused on the question by linking back to answering the question in the final sentence of the paragraph. If you do that, you should be well on your way to uh, achieving nine marks, especially if you can do it twice.